what's going on guys? Uh, I'm coming at you with a uh, training deck profile. Uh, I was at the Indy Regional yesterday and uh, it was a 517 person event. I uh, ended up going X3, so seven wins, three losses. It was 10 rounds. I uh, took 54th place, so nothing too crazy, but top 64 got their invites, so it was nice just to be able to go out there and get uh, get that taken care of, get ready for nationals, but uh, I was playing trains, and uh, this is a uh, favorite deck of mine other than Mermaidals, the uh, two main decks that I play, but uh, I just decided to play this for the event, uh, considering that I was going to take Mermaidals, that's what I've been playing like the last few weeks, uh, you can see all the content on my channel, but uh, um, I just felt like Mermaidals wasn't the option to take, it, it gets hit by Droll too easily, which everyone is playing, or if not maining right now, uh, Dweller just completely shuts down the deck. Uh, Nibiru is a super hard card for it to play around because it, it doesn't have much recovery. Um, so I just decided to take trains instead. I know the deck, like, pretty... I'm very comfortable with the deck. Uh, I've played it at multiple YCSs. I've got 14th place with it Al Altoona. So I definitely, uh, I definitely think it's worth uh, learning. I mean, it's a solid tier 2.5, but in a 2.5 deck... Uh, or tier 2.5 deck that no one knows how to combat or if no one knows what the cards do I mean, it's just as good as anything else and if you pilot it correctly I mean it will definitely uh, Steal you games the deck capitalizes on your opponent going first and setting up boards that uh, can easily be broken Which this deck is phenomenal at so we're gonna go and get into it uh, 40 main 15 and uh, I was actually my side deck was 14 cards yesterday uh, I don't remember if I've changed it or not. We'll look at it here in a second, but uh so this is uh this is what I was playing. Uh three ruffian rail car stampede. It's the best normal summon of the deck. Um whenever it's normal summon, you special summon uh level ten earth machine monster from your graveyard. Actually it just has to be an earth machine, it doesn't have to be level ten. But you can special summon uh an earth machine from your graveyard in defense position indicates its effects. Um but and then it can change the level of one monster on your side of the field to match another level. So he makes himself level ten, uh which then He's a one card XYZ play, which is what you need in order to get your wood condition off. Um, for your additional normal summons, we play two Night Express Knight. Uh, three is too many, one's not enough, in my opinion. I see some people testing it at three right now, which is cool. Uh, it's just not, I haven't really found a need for it at three yet, but uh, I'm very comfortable with it at two. Uh, Triple Terror Crane. Uh, this is the board breaking train, if you will, uh, whenever it's detached from an XYZ monster as a material to activate one of their effects, or just in general, I guess, uh, it pops a card in the field, and that is not a once per turn effect. Uh, so it is insanely good for just clearing whatever that one or two problematic cards is that you need before going into your battle phase. Also, he special summons himself anytime a uh, Earth Machine monster is normal or special summoned, so getting him on the field is never really a problem, especially when it's from hand. Uh, to follow him up, you are playing three bullets. Uh, this guy gives you recovery and grind game uh, ability when during the end phase if he's in your graveyard because he was just simply sent there that turn, whether he's detached, used for a link material, what have you, destroyed by battle. Um, he adds one earth machine monster from your graveyard. Or is it just machine? I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, it's just one machine monster. So, I mean, you can even add uh, like a kaiju or whatever other techie stuff I guess you're playing, but yeah, he's not limited to Earth Machine, but you can add one Machine Monster from your graveyard back to your hand, which a lot of times you're adding uh, Pegasus, just to give yourself a uh, more plays next turn, but uh, it, come, it uh, this card is fantastic. It allows you to play past your turn one if you're not able to OTK. Oh, all right, this was 100% not in the, um, <laughs> we're playing Triple Gigi, ah, oh, Jesus, Jesus Kiru, and one Gamma Seal. Um, Kaiju package was fantastic. Uh, definitely three of these. The fourth one um, I got from another profile idea that worked out quite well. Um, these things come up and, uh, I mean, you have to be able to out your IP Masquerina, your Apollosas, uh, whatever big boss monster towers uh, your opponent's trying to throw at you, but these cards are fantastic. Also, Jizukiro is a level 10 machine, if you didn't know that already, so if you open up any combination of two of these, you get a free level 10 on the board on your side, which is great. Uh, we were playing two Ash Blossom and three Droll. I was definitely expecting to play against Spiral, and I did not play against a single Spiral. I have my matchups, I'll go over those after. Um, Ash obviously is fantastic, it's universal. It did what it was supposed to do. The Droll lock, um, despite not playing any Spirals, definitely still had its utility. I played uh, like three hero players, uh, dinosaur players, uh, invoked, 
So there was definitely a matchups where it, despite it not being the main reason I main decked it, it was still a good main deck choice. And when you're blinding second all day, you don't want to be able to let your opponents sit there and just draw and combo up and add cards to their hand. So um, I don't know if I would necessarily change it, but depending on what the event is or how long, like how the format continues to shape, I don't know where I would go with this. Um, it's still, I mean, uh, up in the air. And then I guess these are hand traps as well, so we'll just put these here as well. Uh, triple impermanence, uh, this card is still broken in any going second deck. It's good in, uh, if you don't need to use it, being able to turn off floodgates, uh, which I did at one point. I turned off a summon limit with it. Um, I, 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 yeah, I, I can't really say much more than that. Impermanence is still broken as shit. Uh, onto the spell cards. Uh, three revolving switchyard, field spell the deck adds an insane consistency. You can pitch any card from your hand to add a level 10 earth machine monster. From your deck to your hand, which either gets you Derek Crane or Bullet, or for whatever reason, Night Express Knight, if you really need that card. Uh, but he adds, this is why I was able to win my last round um, in game two. My hand was kind of, it wasn't dead, but I needed one more uh, way to find a train, because I had urgent schedule. But I top decked this, and I was like, well, there we go. That's access to any train. Speaking of urgent schedule, we are 100% playing three of this card, because it is absolutely insane. Uh, if your con opponent controls more monsters than you do. You special summon two trains from your deck in defense position, uh, one level four and uh, one level five or higher. So, I mean, you're, you're just doing Pegasus, and most of the time, Bullet, uh, if you don't have Derek Crane, or if you already have your Derek Crane, but, I mean, it's vice versa. It just gets you whatever pieces you need, uh, allows you to make your Link plays quite easily, or just go straight into your uh, rank 10 plays if you have another one in hand. So, and this card saved me from getting OTK'd or killed uh, multiple times on... Uh, my opponent's battle phase and if you have revolving switchyard out when you activate this card you can put like a full board of monsters up so if you have I, i'm just going to show it because i can um so you have revolving urgent and oh god it doesn't matter uh like bullet engrave uh your opponent's in battle phase they're attacking they're attacking whatever you don't have anything on field you can activate urgent which will special for the sake of the matter. Uh, like a bullet, a level four will trigger your switch yard, which will then special a level four 1800 uh, body, which gets you Pegasus. Pegasus then will activate and special summon one from graveyard. So, I mean, there it's such a simple uh, maneuver, and no one really thinks through that. I mean, people will read the field spell, but they don't think of, like, that line of play, and it saves you so much. And if you have anger knock a lot, you can extend this even further. Or do it in other types of ways, but yeah, no, um, the field spell and urban schedule have amazing synergy. If it's not searching for pieces that you need to OTK, putting up defensive uh, walls in order for you to not get OTK uh, works just as well. So, just food for thought. Uh, triple lightning storm, Jesus Christ, this card is fucking broken. Uh, I shit on a paleo player, I shit on an alter guys player. Uh, I shit on hero players. They left their board with like there was a hero player that had four monsters. It was like a link and three fusions, and they were all just chilling in attack mode. And like I was like, dude, <laughs> good game. And, yeah, he was not happy about it. Uh, the paleo player, uh, game one, it was round eight. He set five back row against me, and I just dropped this, and he didn't have judgment. And I mean, the card is just that broken. The text is so simplistic. It's just right guy came Herpes feather buster all in one. I don't, like, going second decks, this is a godsend. Uh, follow that up, we're playing Three Pot of Desires. Um, not playing Extravagance, Extra Deck is still, as much as you don't use it really that much other than the train cards, uh, I, I don't think Extravagance is the way. Pot of Desires has never let me down. I do have Extravagances, but I'm not playing it by this. Uh, triple Call by the Grave, even though you're going second deck, so I mean, I know a lot of people think that this isn't fantastic going second, but if you get Ash, Ogre, uh, Valor, I mean, it can be very critical, uh, so playing three of this still seems pretty, uh, standard. I didn't not like it at all, and I mean, going first is still a great card. Uh, you can use it as strike when your opponent's trying to combo off in their graveyard or whatever if you already have it set. So, uh, I mean, you can side it out. I definitely did at some point in time, uh, depending on what the matchup was and if I was going first or second or what the, uh, game state was like, but, uh, no, I definitely, very comfortable three call by the grave. And then these last two cards, um... Or actually, I think they're moved to my side now. Yeah, and for my main, main deck, it was two Cosmics, so these two weren't uh, there. But So I was main decking two Cosmics, which worked out... They, it wasn't bad by any means, but with the Lightning Storms and just the amount of, like... I mean, you can pop with Derek Green and stuff. Like, the, the back row removal wasn't, like, 
crucial. So I did swap them out, and I am trying uh, two new things. I mean, Monster Reborn's not new. A lot of people will play this on trains. But uh, I'm going to try out one Gizmek as an extender, and uh, I don't know. It just kind of popped in my head. I meant to do it before the regional, and I forgot to put it in. And so I was kind of beating myself up, but I 100% did it when I got home. Uh, so now it's in there. So I guess going forward with the deck, if you wanted to play my old build, I mean, you can main deck Cosmics, but I am definitely going to be trying out uh, these guys just as extenders and see how they uh, see how they work. Uh, with the Cosmics in the main deck, though, the build that I played yesterday, it ran incredibly smoothly. Uh, obviously, you can have some bricks, but uh, nothing that you can't, if you can just stop yourself from getting OTK'd and draw a couple cards, nothing that you can't uh, play through. So, 40 card main. The extra deck, one IP Masquerina, Anger Knuckle, Pentastag, Genius, uh, Phoenix, Unicorn, Black Luster, two Dora, two Gustav, two Lee, one Sky Palace, and one Super Robot Galaxy Destroyer. Uh, you use these guys, these guys, maybe this guy. Uh, yeah, use Anger Knuckle, obviously. Pentastatic's great if your opponent's trying to play in defense. Um, I did make uh, Cleefort Genius once yesterday. It was to turn off a Dark Law, uh, which was pretty fucking spicy. I never really needed Unicorn or Phoenix. The IP Masquerade, like, the, all these things can be uh, relatively... The BLS Link is solid. It's a good generic Link 3 for you to be able to go into. Um, I was literally playing, I mean, this is always good just to be able to out floodgates. This was just more of a, I had two spots and I was trying to find the most generic, best stuff that I could use. Now, going forward, um, there was a duel that I lost. It was against Block Dragon BA, and he made Avermax turn one with uh, IP, so it could not be targeted, destroyed. It, it like super beefy Abramax essentially, which is hard enough as is to get over. Now Borload can out it, which I was not playing, so that is an idea. Now I, uh, later in the tournament, I saw a Burning Abyss player get hit with the same. He was playing in the match next to me, and I had already finished my match, but I was watching them play, and he uh, was playing F Zero because his opponent made Abramax and just passed uh, late in the game, and his opponent was able to bring back Le or make Levier, bring back a Dante, overlay those two into F Zero. And F0 was able to out the Abramax. Uh, F0 just requires two XYZ monsters with the same rank. Now under MR5, the new revisions that are coming, this deck can obviously pump out two rank 10s a lot easier. So food for thought, I, you could very easily play F0 in this deck along with Borlode, um, but just to be able to out problematic cards like that. So moving forward, I think I might try and squeeze that in um, just because it, it works quite well. Uh, but other than that, extra deck works fine. As long as you run two of like each of the trains, you, you could fucking run a seven card extra deck. You could run Anger Knuckle and then two of each of the trains, and you you would realistically be fine. I did uh, play a dinosaur player, and uh, game one, uh, he went first or whatever, and uh, he made the um, True King, the Earth one, and that lets you look through your opponent's extra deck, and you rip three cards out, and he picked up my extra deck or whatever and started going through it, and once he got to the back half where I had all the XYZ monsters, he saw that I was playing trains, but I was playing two of each of the good ones, and he just said, fuck, because he knew that there was nothing he could do to stop the OTK that was coming, so uh, yeah, extra deck was good. It did what it was supposed to do. Uh, for the side, uh, three Artifact Lancia. These were Nibiru's, and I swapped them out, and Lancia definitely had its utility. Uh, it was great against, like, uh, the BA player, I uh, dropped it so he, he was main decking Mali. It was good against hero players as well to be able to stop Mali from going off. Uh, what other matchups? Uh, oh, Invoked, it wasn't bad against. Uh, I dropped it on him uh, as soon as he added, or he activated his invocation, so it just kind of fizzled, so he wasn't able to pump anything out. I did lose that match, but it was good against him. So as far as swapping out for the Nibiru, I don't regret it at all. Um, it worked pretty all right. I mean, obviously the threat of Orcus is always there as well. But uh, I didn't play any Orcist. Two mind control, still, I mean, it's done what or did what mind control's been doing for a while. Just out big problematic monsters, uh, forces your opponent to use uh, resources potentially. Like I had an opponent that ended on UCT, the Conductor Tyranno, and uh, Dolka. Loggy is the one that can solve anything, but uh, Dolka is the effect monster negator, and so I used this to take or targeted his Dolka. And he was forced to pop it with his UCT, so I 
wasn't able. It, it was the card's good. It allows or it forces your opponent just to uh, play awkwardly around it. I suppose. Uh, I love Forbidden Chalice. I have been a huge uh, proponent of citing this for quite some time now. It works incredibly well going first or second. It shuts off Artifact Scythe, which for whatever reason if your opponent's playing that shit, uh, can get over, uh, which locks you out of your extra deck, obviously. I, it, Dweller, it hurts. Uh, Dweller doesn't kill this deck, but it definitely hinders it with Bullet and Veracrane, both being like graveyard-reliant effects. Uh, but no, I, I just... It's very universal, it's generic, it's good. You can normal summon Night Express Knight and attack, and then chain this like in damage step, and he goes up to 3400 attack, which is super cheeky. I beat an Altergeist player like that once at Locals. So it's got some niche interactions, but yeah, Chalice is definitely very good. Uh, I took two Cosmics out of the main, but I am citing three now. Um, yesterday, yesterday I was only running 14 cards in my side deck, and I had one extra Cosmic and one Twin Twister in my side, so it was just a Cosmic, and this was a Twin yesterday. But now uh, that I've moved the two Cosmics out of the main, I'm comfortable with them inside. Uh, if you're going against a super back row heavy deck and you want to go first, for whatever reason, I, I don't know why you do that, you can obviously side them, but going second just to be able to pick off even more back row, total Cosmic. Uh, and then we are playing three evenly and one red reboot. Uh, I never saw a red reboot evenly matched. Uh, helped me in my Paleo matchup game two. I dropped Lightning Storm on him. He flipped over Imperial Order and then he had four set card still, and I even lead, and he just kept the Imperial Order up, which isn't that hard to play around in trains. So the side deck worked out quite well. This is the um, how it's been changed as of last night, but this is going forward, I think, how I'm going to run it for the hot minute, um, and it works uh, pretty smoothly. Uh, my matchups, I, uh, round one, I played against, uh, I think his name was Chester Henson, and I didn't, he was like the 2017 national champ. It was a good match, but um, it was just funny. I lost 0-2 uh, to him. He was playing Lunar Light Time Thief. Uh, round 2, I 2 0 a Dinosaur player. Round 3, I 2 0 a Hero player. I'm sorry, 2-1. Uh, round 4, 2 0 a Hero player. Round 5, I lost 1-2 to Mech Knight and Vote. He super polyed me in Game 3, and he used my Dora. He had Summon, lim summon Limit up, and... Um, no monsters. He used instant fusion, brought out Raijin, and then used super poly and for both of our monsters, then the extra monster zone to make Elysium, and that's just super hard to get out or get over when someone limits up. And I had a kaiju for it, but nothing to out the kaiju. So that was quite unfortunate. So he ended up taking that one. Round six, I lost 0 2 to Block Dragon BA. Uh, that deck is just absolutely nasty. He puts up Fossil Dynam, which you can't kaiju over. Um, like you have to essentially draw Raigeki Storm, but even then, the Fossil Dynam is in defense position. So, uh, Block Dragon BA, definitely a, a hard or deck, and then game two is when he made that Abramax that I couldn't get over. So, that was a good learning experience, though. Uh, round seven, so from here, I had to, it was ten rounds, and I had to win out my last four. Uh, round seven, I 2 out a hero player. Round eight, um, I technically got the win, but this one was kind of, I'm not going to lie, it was luck. Uh, we went into time. Um, game one, he won. Game two, I won. And then we had like a minute and a half, if that, by the time we were done shuffling transitioning decks and all that stuff so I did my turn one board I didn't really have much to do I think I set three and set a pegasus and like he started going off but he had maybe 18 20 seconds to play so time was called and at that point if either of us had um, if we had taken the draw neither of us could top so I was like dude you just want to roll a dice for it and he's like sure so he rolled and I said even me odd you and he rolled a six, and so I got the win. So that one, I will lie, was or won't lie, was lucky. But I mean, we'd rather risk it for one of us to be able to get our invite rather than either of us be able to. So it worked out because I got my invite. Uh, round nine, I played against Paleo Frog. Lightning Storm just completely shit on him. And then round ten, I played against Alter Geist and I two owed him, um, which I not gonna lie, I didn't think I was gonna be able to beat Alter Geist, but um, I did, and that's kind of the beauty of trains is they can push through and. Completely fucked shit up. So, again, it was top 64. I ended up taking 54th place out of 517. So, not, like, the most impressive uh, invite. But uh, as far as uh, trains getting out there and getting those big numbers up, uh, I was glad to be able to out there, go out there and represent the deck a little bit. So, it was super fun. The deck is super enjoyable. Uh, definitely look into it if you haven't tried it yet. But, uh, yeah, thank you for watching. I appreciate it.